Nothing's as exciting um, and maybe intimidating as writing a personal testimony. This is a good thing and a great opportunity, but um, I can't fault students. I can't fault anyone uh, for finding it overwhelming, the thought of sharing a personal testimony. I think a lot of that comes from uh, not understanding what all a personal testimony is, and also maybe not feeling enough freedom for a personal testimony to look um, uh, and reflect ways that match people's individuality. And uh, we're going to talk about that some as we work through writing my personal testimony. Our objective here is to understand what a testimony is, why it's important. Secondly, to know the different ways of telling your story. And third, to develop a personal testimony through a process that hopefully makes working through this simpler for you. So what really is a testimony? Um, well, a testimony uh, comes from the word to testify. What is it that you think of when you think of the word testify? I know what I think of is in a courtroom setting that uh, there's witnesses that are brought to testify. Um, I have jury duty next week, and I might well be in the jury box watching uh, evidence be received in the courtroom and might have to watch uh, eyewitnesses, will likely have to see eyewitnesses who are testifying to something. Uh, and so you have a, a, a testimony that's a witness to something or, or someone else, or it provides evidence about something that has happened. So it's proof or witness of something. So when we talk about testimony, we're talking about a testimony or witness to the work of Jesus in our life in one way or another. I think it's helpful to have uh, some analogies for what a testimony is. One analogy is to think of it as a book. And I think about the board books that we give to toddlers. Um, they're the ones with the cardboard pages that it's hard for them to destroy. And uh, they, they have to strip the story down to something very basic. And so you've got um, uh, just some very big summary statements that are in there with some pictures. And I think that's kind of a decent picture um, to keep in mind. And it doesn't need to, that doesn't mean it's dumbed down to that level or anything like that. But I, I just think of that challenge of, of summarizing our life story is much like the challenge that those publisher, publishers go through, taking the enormity of someone's entire life, the full version of whatever book it is, and in some way translating that then into this synopsis to make the, the board book for toddlers. Another pic a picture for it is to have it be you know, a statement of faith. And in, in point of fact, that's a big part of what a testimony is, is that it's a very personal statement of faith. We make a statement of faith um, most often with uh, creeds like the Apostles' Creed especially. And, and um, that's fine, that's necessary, it's good, but I think it's also useful for quite a number of reasons to have a personal statement of faith um, outside of ones that we use corporately. And because it's our statement of faith, we have freedom to express things in a individual and personal way. Another way to think about it is thinking about it as a roadmap of a journey that you've been on. Maybe you've been on a road trip or vacation with your family or with classmates or friends, and then you've got um, you know, pictures that you're putting up and you're kind of doing a summary and you maybe have like a bullet point of destinations you've been to, or maybe even literally have a map uh, kind of showing what the journey looks like. That's a good picture of what it is that you're trying to accomplish too. Uh, and we can think about it as a photo album of your faith life. That's what a testimony is like. Why share a testimony? Writing a testimony is one thing maybe, but but sharing a testimony is significant because we we bear witness to Christ. So when we share our testimony as you know human beings in the room together, it's an opportunity for us to to speak or to hear of uh, a witness to Jesus Christ working in the life of someone else. And it's a story that helps others. Um, everyone's story is different, but uh, it's amazing how often people are helped in their spiritual walk and, and encouraged because they realize, oh, wow, look, here's this other person. I had no idea that they struggled with the same thing or uh, felt the same way about things or went through the same kind of story in this part of their life. It helps others to feel like they're not alone in their faith walk, and it helps normalize, too, some of these waypoints in our own personal faith journey that match up with others. You share something unique. Um, whatever 
you speak to in your testimony, it's bound to be unique. And, and it, it, it's, it's impossible to get tired of hearing people's personal testimony because they get so unique. And especially as life goes on, they continue to take on new color and significance and meaning. So in sharing your testimony, you're share, sharing something that's genuinely unique. The last thing I'd say is that audibly hearing this is different. And um, we talk about God's word, and this is a, a different topic, um, but, but God's word is unique in being heard. And, and that's connective to this because this, th this process of developing a personal testimony using scripture where you can is definitely appropriate. Um, but we also see the context of testimony being with other people because the quality of sharing our personal faith with other human beings is, um, is just qualitatively different. There is no right way of telling your testimony, um, but I think that there's some good ways to tell your testimony. And I think that uh, giving sort of two, two patterns for how that can look will really help. But before we get into those two avenues for actually fleshing out a testimony, I think it's important to really think about what it means to tell our testimony and how there are, there, there's an intersection of stories that takes place. Uh, but we're going to start talking about brainstorming. Now, we all do brainstorming. It's where we just sort of are at the beginning of a process and we start putting ideas down. And the ideas that we're interested in capturing for the purpose of developing a personal testimony is to just capture ways that God has been at work in your life. And we're going to call these things faith memories. Now, these faith memories are going to look different for everybody. It could be maybe a significant conversation you had someone. Maybe it was being at a Bible camp or a particular time in worship. Or maybe there was a scripture passage that was special to you. Um, maybe it was a milestone in life. Maybe it was an experience, uh, whether that was in church or with family or at work. Um, there's all kinds of places where we look back in our life and we recognize moments that were significant in our faith in one shape or another. And some of these are significant because they were positive, and some of these are significant because they were challenging. Um, but this is a time to really explore um, anything that in your life and faith has been significant to you. As we begin this process, I think it's important to think of 1 Peter 3.15. And it says there always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. We are called to always be ready to give an answer for why it is that we put our living hope in Jesus Christ and explain why that's so. And, and so Jesus calls us to be ready to give an answer because we're given opportunities so often to share our faith and to share in a wonderful blessing in seeing the fruit of sharing how God has worked in our life. We need to be prepared to give an answer because the world will ask. People will ask about what you believe and why, and they want uh, oftentimes to know personally why that's the case. And so um, I, I think it's appropriate that this is something that we need to always be ready for. We can talk about our testimony as the intersection of three stories. This is, I think, the most helpful way to talk about telling of, of what a personal testimony is. And so we have my story. So our own personal point of view, where I was, where I am now. Then there's his story. This is God's story, where God has been at work and where that intersects then with our story. And so uh, we think of the reality of God, we think of the reality of the love of Jesus Christ, and where that then comes into, the, into frame with our story. So we have my story, we have his story, and then we have your story. And what we mean by your story is the audience. This is where someone else sees themselves in the story that you're telling. Because again, testimonies are about the other people in the room too. So we have an intersection of these three perspectives in a testimony. 
So we think about the first vantage point of a testimony being my story, your personal story, your personal experience, and understanding that from a framework of either transformation or growth. And we'll talk about that um, a little bit later. Where in my life have I seen God at work in me? Did he transform me? Has he been helping me? What is the nature of God's work in your story? And so you're looking at your personal history perspective, your place in life and experience, and seeing where Jesus has been at work. And as you flesh out, especially this perspective on your story, what uh, that, that aspect of, you know, when we look at our own personal story and we say what my story is, uh, what we'll see is that it tends to, to either be, it, it's not an either or, but, but it, it, it's going to see, we're going to see a story of, of a transformation where we go from not knowing Jesus being someplace far from God to being close to God. Or we might see a story where we are confronted with an issue. We need to learn a lesson that we're able then to live on and carry on in our life. And, and for some of us, we can tell our personal testimony in different ways that involve both transformation or growth. Uh, personal testimony is personal. So it starts with my story. That's the starting place of telling your testimony. The second part of this is to tell his story, God's story, what God was doing in my life at the time. Um, he's always at work. We don't notice it. But this is where we understand how what God says in his word and what God has told through his story suddenly is finding its way into our life. How it is that we in just kind of living our life, whatever that looks like, how it is that we've encountered God and how God has made his way it present into our situation. What was God doing? Who did he use? Um, what did that look like? Those are the kinds of questions we're looking at. How is it that God comes into the story? And then finally, there's your story. Again, this is the audience question. The goal of a testimony is to tell the story, but to have a listener also connect to that story. So we want to tell a story in such a way that it connects with someone else. A, a testimony is to bear witness to Jesus Christ. So we want our story to make sense to that person, and we want our story to be significant to that person too. So it's important for us to think about questions like, how does your story connect to them? What did you learn that others might be able to learn from? Uh, and I think it's important for us to be cognizant of that because the goal of a testimony isn't for us to just feel good about having expressed something. But I think, again, it's recognizing the good that can be done from a personal testimony and trying to be intentional about that and testifying how it is that God has intersected into our story, trusting that through a lot of those times that we share, uh, God's using our testimony to actually shape the testimony of someone else in the room. Who knows, you might be one of, uh, you might be providing one of those moments that's part of their brainstorming of spiritual faith memories that leads them to a, a saving faith or renewed faith in Jesus Christ. So be cognizant of the purpose for sharing your testimony. Everyone has a story. And so whether you're sharing your story uh, or you're sharing the story of Jesus Christ, uh, the typewriter of God's always rattling along. He is writing through the gift of the Holy Spirit, the, the lives of other people. He's using his word that doesn't change to be at work in an ever-changing world. And, and this is the wonderful thing about sharing your story is that it's one of the ways that God uses to be working in the life story of other people like you. mentioned that there's more than one kind of personal testimony that we can share. And I think talking about different ways that a testimony can look is really helpful in making it concrete for us. The first way that a, a testimony can be presented is as a transformation story. This shares how God brought you to faith in him. And so we think of the butterfly that uh, finds its way to the branch and hides in the cocoon and emerges as a butterfly. Uh, this is 
the the a story of transformation from how does that in some way we were in one state and now we are transformed and we're something different because of Jesus in our life. And I think this is probably most commonly what people associate with a personal testimony. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I think it uh, can distract us from the second kind of, uh, of uh, story that we can tell. tell. Growth stories are just as legitimate as personal faith testimonies. Now, a growth story uh, talks about what God has been teaching you lately. And so instead of this being a story of transformation, it's a story of, of growth where we're coming up against an issue or a problem and we've worked through that or God has been working on us through that. Um, and so there's been progress along our way. And so uh, for you, maybe you've always grown up in a Christian home and maybe you've always been kind of a Christian. It's hard for you to pin down exactly when it was that that took place. I think that can be okay. I think it's important then to understand where it is that God has been working in your life lately, because we know that it's God who saves us and that he saves us even through his word. So it can be difficult to identify the specific time that happened. So this is a, a way for us to talk about where it is that God is specifically working in us today pinpointing exactly when you were saved is far less important than being able to point to Jesus being present in our life today on account of what scripture says, on account of what God is doing in our life. Whichever, whichever story that you choose to tell, be real. This is about finding a way to tell a story that only you can tell. And sometimes your story is going to be a transformation story. Maybe it's going to be a growth story, or maybe it's going to be both. I know for myself, I could tell my story in uh, either framework differently, um, uh, just as a matter of being able to do that. And I think there's many people for which that's the case. So um, I think it's okay for you to kind of, um, kind of try one and see how it goes. And if you end up doing both, more power to you. So for a transformation story, a story of change from one condition to another, from one state to another state, how is it that we tell this kind of story? This story, again, shares how God brought you to faith in Christ. So keep that in mind as we talk about these steps. A transformation story marries before, how, and after Jesus. So it's before Jesus, it's how Jesus was made present and after Jesus was present in your life. That's kind of the, the basic formula for a transformation story. The questions that we think of in the first part of this uh, three-part framework for telling a transformation story um, is it's about life before Jesus. What issues did you wrestle with? What were your thoughts about faith, God, the church, Christianity? What were you doing with your life? Uh, how did you feel? Where was your life going? These kinds of questions really help uh, kind of frame out this first component of a transformation story, talking about how life looked before Jesus. The second component is to talk about where Jesus stepped in. Uh, who told you about Jesus? What was said? Uh, was there someone that was with you? Do you remember something about how you were, you were feeling or how you were thinking um, in that time? Was there something that you said or that you prayed? And I think that's important because in, in we think about sharing a testimony, we want it to be useful. And if there's someone else in the room that was dealing with this same kind of moment where, where, where there was this moment where it, it just seemed like they, they needed to do something, uh, what is it then that, that we do, the choice that we make and, uh, and, and working through those moments sometimes of spiritual turmoil uh, to work through to an understanding of assurance of salvation purely on the basis of what Christ has accomplished. Um, whatever your response is when you're in moments like that, it's, it's, it's helpful to other believers and an authentic, uh, necessary thing that we need as Christians to hear how Jesus stepped into your life. 
the third part of telling a transformation story is to tell about life after Jesus. So now that Jesus is with you, how is your life different? What differences have you noticed since this has happened? Do people tell anything different about what's going on with you? And what's going to happen next in your faith journey uh, uh, as things move on? So, so you can see this before, how, after of a transformation story, how it marries these three uh, sort of chapters together to make a story. And so as you're able to work through answering those questions in each of those parts, you're really able to to develop um, uh, a lot of the framework of a story that's going to represent your personal testimony as a transformation story. As I said before, a growth story is different than a transformation story, uh, but it still makes for a good testimony. It really does. A growth story shares what God has been doing in your life lately. What is God teaching you? And uh, this is a good way to testify to God's ongoing work in the life of someone with a Christian faith. And um, this is, I think, a helpful framework for working through a growth story. The growth story basically is an issue presented by Jesus, a lesson taught by Jesus, and a response then that Jesus has caused in our hearts. That's what a growth story looks like. There's a problem, question, issue, and then wrestling with that, struggling with that, uh, the Holy Spirit working on us, there's something that we learn and there's a response then that we see at the end of the story. So the first thing that happens, the first chapter of this growth testimony is where Jesus shows us an issue. What issue or question have you been struggling with? Uh, what's been going on in your life? Where are there things to celebrate? Where are the things that have been difficult or challenging and stretching you? What have been things that have caused you to stumble in your walk with Christ or caused you to doubt him or question his faithfulness? Um, what's the difficult stuff that has come with trying to be a follower of Jesus? And so um, this is where you get to talk about whatever aspect of question or problem or issue, difficulty, friction there is um, that, that has presented to us difficulty. The second component is where Jesus then teaches a lesson. And so going through this experience, what did you learn about you know, whatever this issue is? And what insight from God did you receive from the Bible? going to God's word, hearing Jesus speak through his word, what was it that you learned? Um, was there a friend that encouraged you through this? And what have you learned? And how have you grown in this area issue since it first presented itself to you? Um, I think this is just a, a really powerful way to think about our faith story, because I think this is something that many can talk about, is being presented with an issue and a difficulty and Jesus teaching us through it. After Jesus has been working on teaching us, there's a call for response. Um, as we've been dealing with this difficulty friction, what response is God calling from uh, calling from you or from, from listeners? What is it that, that God called you to do differently? Or what is it that God is calling others to differently as a result? If there was a definite lesson from God taught to you, how does he want you to live in that now? And if there hasn't been an answer yet, how do you want others to pray for you? I think that's important. I think it's okay. Uh, sometimes there's testimonies about, okay, here's the issue. This is what Jesus taught me. And I'm, I'm not entirely sure how to implement all of that, or I've implemented this much and I'm not sure where it's going, or it's, you know, I, this is what's changed and I'm still kind of working through it. It's early days. Um, there's just all kinds of aspects of what it looks like when Jesus causes a response in our life. How do we respond to working through the difficulty and uh, the issue as part of our growth testimony? So again, you can see how a growth testimony is unique in the fact that it takes us through an issue, lesson, and response that makes it characteristically different from a transformation testimony. Um, and again, you, you might end up doing both. So in terms of the actual work of writing a testimony, how do you do this? Um, writing assignments don't tend to be the favorite of students. Um, I can I can understand that. Um, so what does it take to actually do the work of writing a testimony? First of all, do the work. <laughs> um, this 
booklet that uh, is part of this video series, you probably have that. The whole reason that you have that worksheet is to make this a whole lot easier for you. Work through the story questions. You can start out working on the transformation story. You can start working on the growth story. Doesn't matter. Start working on them and see which one makes more sense. But don't skip the questions. Do the, the brainstorming of spiritual faith memories. Don't skip doing that. And as you work through the worksheet, just you know put stuff in there and start working that out. Do the work. Please don't skip the work. I've already done a lot of work for you and laying out this whole worksheet thing so that hopefully it's not as much work spent trying to figure out how to cobble it all together. Trust the process that as you work through the worksheet, um, you're going to have the components you need to have a written testimony at the end. A couple helpful steps. Pray. This is supposed to be something that's um, spiritually edifying to you. So, so pray, check your heart. I know life is busy and sometimes we just want to go through the motions just to get things done. Um, I, I just pray that you will check your heart, that this gets to be something more than a homework assignment. This is your opportunity to share about your place and relationship with Jesus Christ. It's about you talking about where it is that you are in your relationship with your eternal father and with Jesus Christ. It's a really important thing. And it's something we should all get good at. And so I, I really hope that this is something more than a homework assignment for you and as a family, as you work through it together too. Um, the second thing is think of the audience. Again, a testimony is about not just sharing my story. It's not just about sharing his story, but it's sharing that into your story, to the, the, the story of the listener, the audience. And so uh, just be mindful of that audience as you work through things as well. Um, do write print things out. I mean, obviously, I am 100% in favor of the digital age, but um, it, it just, this whole thing goes a lot better if you're able to scribble notes and make a mess. The messier things are in the front of it, the cleaner things will be um, as you develop this. Trust me, trust the process. It will work. Um, make a mess early, you'll have less of a mess at the end. Get feedback. Um, this is an opportunity for you to utilize parents or maybe you've got grandparents or you've got um, on people that you can trust, that you can kind of bounce ideas off as you're trying to pull all this together. Um, that's okay. Get feedback. You can get feedback from me. Um, no issue at all. Practice. Uh, once you have things developed and you have your testimony on paper, um, it, I think it's a good idea to practice. No one wants to have their first run be in front of a group of people. Um, just don't do that to yourself. <laughs> just plan to practice it. And that means, yeah, keep ahead of the work. If you leave it to last minute, then you're going to be that one that's doing it last minute. And, and don't do that to yourself, okay? And, and ignore doubts. The whole focus of this is to focus on God and to glorify Him through sharing where it is that He's intervening in your story. Maybe where it is that He's intervening in someone else's story through your story. So focus on God. Um, this is about him. It's about Jesus and about how Jesus can be testified to through your life. So get to work. Um, <laughs> work it, write it, submit it, share it. Um, get to work on the worksheet. Get the homework done working through that packet. Um, and the sooner that you get that complete and together, writing it will come together really quickly so that you can get that to me so that we know that we've got, uh, you know, what we need to have in place for that and, and share it. And you don't have to wait until whatever the assigned time is to share your testimony. Share with your family. Uh, they're going to love hearing this. This is a wonderful thing to be able to share with each other. Uh, I'm certainly excited to hear the testimonies of anyone who is experiencing Christ in whatever way that looks like, whether that's transformation or growth. Um, we are all so blessed when we hear about how Jesus is working in our life. So that is writing your personal testimony. I hope this was a real blessing to you. And I hope this is something that you actually come back to watching maybe 
later down the line. And maybe you rewrite your testimony, or maybe if you wrote a growth testimony, now, now you're writing a transformation testimony or vice versa. Maybe you wrote a transformation testimony or, and now there's something that's changed and there's growth happening in your spiritual life. And you're trying to figure out how to communicate that. Um, I, I really hope that's something that happens. Maybe you have a friend that doesn't know how to talk about the relationship with Jesus or just some of the things that God has been doing in their life. Hey, you know, you got a video that you can share. And, uh, and I hope that this is something that's useful for you, sharing your faith and encouraging the faith of other people God's placed in your life.